the art scene in Lancaster, the arts is never ending. <laughs> you think you know every band, you think you've seen every street guitarist, but then next day you see someone else and you meet someone and you learn faces and it's one big, like, happy community. If it's within the realm of art, it happens here. We've become a magnet to talent. It's been uh, illustrated in a couple different ways that the community of Lancaster has an arts environment, an arts community, about eight times the size of a normal community of 60,000 people. Jeff Parks used a phrase that art gives us pause, and I think it, the meaning of that is that it gives us a time to reflect. When we think about civilizations, we think about what the artists, what the creators left behind. So there are bridges and ways that we educate each other very personally through the arts and very uniquely. It's quite frankly a driver of civilization itself and certainly humanity. And it's a way to express yourself uh, in a voice that might be universal. What just happened was the first ever community arts parade in Lancaster. When we heard about the Governor's Award for the Arts, Barry and I cooked up this idea that we would have a giant puppet parade featuring puppets from every school district in the county. Lancaster is this wonderful art-friendly town. The very fact that we had this parade, which was done with the blessing of the Lancaster Office of Promotion, they're really the people who made it all happen. I mean, it's not a good easy thing on a weekend to shut down the main streets in the city, but you know, they were all behind it. And I think that's just a great little example of the kind of commitment to the arts that we have in this community. So I think it was a big deal for kids to see all those artists out there. I love the dragonflies and the circus performers and the bands. It was really great. There's such an infusion of culture here for a small city, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we are sort of an important part of bringing many refugees from many different parts of the world here. It makes people who grew up here, who live here, have a much wider sensibility of the world than people who might grow up in a similarly sized town that doesn't have that. And with those people, there come their own art forms, sometimes folk art forms, sometimes things that are a little bit more structured and formal. I love the um, funky vibe of this town. I never know what I'm going to see when I walk downtown. The arts are sort of sneaky in the way that they infuse a community and the way that they're important to a community. And it, it's got many sort of tentacles. Um, but I think one of the primary things that most people experience is the way it beautifies a community. Some of the things that are less visible are the ways that the arts unite a community, that they are able to speak in a kind of common language. Hi, how are you? Please make a poem on the side of our poetry band. We are doing this project as part of the Pennsylvania Governors on the Arts Awards. Oh, okay. And in the week preceding the awards, the city of Lancaster asked artists and arts organizations to do these projects to celebrate different kinds of art making. And we're doing these trips around town to invite people to make poems on the side of the van, and then also perform their work and do writing prompts. And then we're also doing workshops, exercises like um, how to write a post-it note apology poem. When you're, you know you should be sorry, but you're not really. I love poetry. Everyone leaves when Buchanan kids race, race rustic buggies, then farm turquoise pancakes to old chipmunk men. In this situation, you're actually putting your work out there in front of other people and saying, this is how I see the world. What do you think? I might be um, an author, but I'm not really sure about that. Lancaster City is a welcoming community. We have all types of different conventions that come here. The, the range and the depth of the talent and the things that are celebrated here, you know, the, the city fully supports. And this week was really reflective of that. And we kind of just let people do their thing. Over the past several years, we've completed several very successful public art projects throughout the city including the Silent Symphony at the Northern Gateway. The beautification makes it more interesting to live and work in a space. When you have things like parks and public art projects, people have more of a reason to talk about their neighborhood as their home rather than just their house as their home. Revolutions at Brandon Park, Changing Gears at Crystal Park, and Dancing Arches at Rodney Park. I've seen all the different ones over the city of Lancaster, and I think I, I like ours best. I really do. 
One of the priorities for public art going forward is really about creative placemaking and how we are connecting people to the place in which they live, their neighborhood, that pride of place, that, that sense of ownership, but also their story. We put out a public call for artists to do things inspired by this geometric design that we were uh, designing on the side of our building and wound up with uh, now 27 different little mini murals throughout the neighborhood. The yeah, Two Dudes Painting sent us out here to kind of lifen up the neighborhood, make it look pretty. It would have been fun to do the whole wall, but yeah. Anywhere's a good spot to put art. Just you gotta be creative with it. You know, you wanna be, put something there that people want to see. You wanna see. Or you wanna see people make it. Like, oh wow, they're working on something. Ah, I wonder what they're gonna make. You know, like, get people thinking and talking. You know, people care about where we're living too, enough to put something up, up there. I personally have gotten to know 27 new people in my neighborhood that I wouldn't have had contact with before. Now we have a whole community of people in this neighborhood that are walking past things and, and experiencing that on a daily basis, just as part of their everyday life. The SOE effort and the murals that are throughout that neighborhood are awesome because you're walking around a corner and then all of a sudden you look up and there's some little magical thing. I mean, I'm not much of a painter, but I, you, get, you jump at the chance to be artistic in any way you can, really. You know, everybody keeps saying that Lancaster's getting so much bigger and so much better, and we were at a friend's studio out in Columbia and found the, that their art catalog, and that was, like, so crazy. The art scene has always been here. It's always been here, but now... I think it's just bigger. I think that we've built a success on the arts, and it's time we start recognizing the artists that made the city what it is. Well, we, we have a long tradition of abstract geometric art here, Amish quilts. There's all kinds of traditions of furniture, tall clocks, carvings, fractor, many, many different kinds of things that are really specific to this area that are unique and wonderful. Charles DeMuth is Lancaster's most famous artist. He was born and raised here and painted the majority of his over a thousand works of art here in his studio in the DeMuth Museum. A century before though, Jacob Eicholtz, a portrait painter. People like David Broombaugh, technically he was so beautifully proficient that the people that bought his art and liked his art, when, he, when they saw his abstract art, thought, well, there's something else going on here. In the 1950s or so, Armstrong World Industries, which was huge in this community, had a lot of people in the creative capacities. They were actually doing, creating industrial shows and things of that sort. And when that Armstrong kind of was shrinking, I think those people didn't leave. They found their way into the community and started building an, an arts community. There used to be a small community of artists and you pretty much knew everybody. Uh, today, having over 55 artists gathered together is a remarkable thing, and the turnout of artists all week of all different genres has just been amazing. Uh, but to have all these visual artists come together here at the Lancaster Museum of Art is a really special tribute to the Governor's Arts Awards being here and to Rick and Gail Gray and their special place in our hearts and moving the arts forward here in Lancaster. And one more. One, two, three. Lancaster is a really exciting place for an artist and for an art historian like myself. I came from being an assistant curator at the Whitney Museum in New York City and thought, uh-oh, here we go, <laughs> out to Lancaster. But no, there are more artists making art in this city than per capita than almost New York City. It's a beautiful city. It's, I mean, people run into each other all the time. You, you can walk down the street and run into like 12 people you know. People constantly talk about how easy it is to walk to any of the venues and be here. We have a thriving gallery scene on Prince Street, which is now expanding wonderfully to Water Street and West King Street. Uh, lots of new opportunities are popping up all over town, and it's such a great ecosystem for visual artists to find places to exhibit and for people to enjoy their work. Go to Philly, go to New York, go to Baltimore, go to Washington, and you'll see art that's no better and very often not as good. We're figuring out what we need in the community as far as like art and creativity and then, um, you know, if the door's not open, kind of open up for yourself. The show is called Untitled Lancaster. It's a community exhibition. It's unique because an established artist can be paired right next to a three-year-old. It's a very interesting dichotomy of all different levels and experiences and uh, mediums. The more people don't have art, the more it shows. I think that people need that creative outlet, not only 
for the making of art, but for the enjoyment of it. Art is important to the community. It's, it's a unique form of communication where it's inclusive. Anybody can interact with it and everybody could have a different response. So I think it's a great way for people to kind of shape what they believe because when you, even when you walk into this show, you're gonna see paintings that you like, that you love, and that maybe make you uncomfortable. It's an opportunity for you to feel all those emotions and then maybe learn a little bit about yourself. If you like something or don't like something, that's all you need to know about art. So get things that, that speak to you that you would like to see every day. And you have to have enough people to support artists, i.e., you know, buy their work and give them gigs and do all that kind of stuff uh, to feed the, the market for artists to thrive. The artists move in because it's low rent. They can get a studio. Uh, after the artists come the coffee shops and the different unique small restaurants and boutiques. We've seen it. The next thing comes is condominiums, apartments, and the artists move out. Uh, we see that happening to a certain degree right now. We don't want it to happen. We want to keep our artistic community in the city. The idea behind the All Four Lancaster Music Festival was to try and have music in all four quadrants of the city and to promote community and music and this idea of coming out and celebrating our city. Very excited to be out here and a part of this beautiful day. You know, the idea behind going between venues with marching music is to engage the entire community. They may not know that there's a festival going on today. I think if Lancaster's special, it's because of the collaborative spirit. It's always amazing to me how, you, if you have an idea, how quickly you can get that the tentacles out to other people and how quickly they jump on board. So it's everything from talking to the city and the city being excited for you, but it's also talking to different bands. As soon as we mentioned this to most of the bands, they were like, we're in. As part of All Four Lancaster, there was brass bands, there's folk, there's hip hop. We've got a, a Latin groove band to end the night. There we go, there we go. Everybody thinks that of art as sort of beautification or patina or something that looks nice, but we're trying to make the point that it has real value economically, culturally, it has value to neighborhoods. Every single issue that we face in this increasingly fast-paced world it's becoming more complex. And in such a world, the only way that we're gonna be able to effectively address those increasingly complex issues and challenges is if we develop in our populace a corresponding increase in creativity. And the research tells us that music is the most powerful instrument in our educational community arsenal to teach creativity, thinking out of the box. It started out as a community orchestra and was professionalized about 10 years ago. Today we'll have a rehearsal. It's an open rehearsal where we have children that come from all over Lancaster County and they have a video presentation that goes on while the music is in session. At the, the Lancaster Symphony Orchestra, we believe that music matters to our community, to the children in our community, and to our patrons and sponsors. Music for everyone's keys for the city. Eight years ago now, we had this idea and uh, that we were going to put pianos, spread pianos throughout downtown. We were going to get artists to, to paint them. Available from mid-May through mid-September, 24-7. We're at a point now, after eight years and over 100 pianos uh, through those years out in the streets, we can proudly proclaim Lancaster, Pennsylvania as the street piano capital of the world. There are literally tens of thousands of magical musical moments that occur around those pianos all summer long. And it's a really unified the city in a unique way. I mean, you could be walking down the street a block away and you hear somebody playing Chopin on the piano. You, you don't see it, but you can hear it and you feel connected to that, 
not only that piano player, but you feel connected to the, to the city as a whole. You know, my five-year-old thinks that all the pianos that are painted out there are just for him to play. Um, and he's a brilliant musician, by the way, if I do say so myself. No, he's, uh, he, you know, he loves it, but that's kind of what the point is, right? It means come in, sit down, enjoy your, enjoy your piano. Without the arts, we don't have a reflection of our humanity, and we don't have a place to go to gather as a community to experience something that happens once and only once for the community that's gathered at that moment. I have often dreamed of a far-off place where heroes are welcome would be way the actual observation of humans interacting with each other such, seems like such a rare thing these days when all of us are plugged in so much to our screens. When we're able to watch plays or musicals or opera or the performing arts in general, uh, you're seeing people put themselves out there and it's a very human thing that has happened from the very beginning of time. It's about communication. The Fulton is a National Historic Landmark, one of the oldest operating theaters, if not the oldest op continuously operating theater in America. It does you know, highly professional quality work. That's a great anchor for the theater community, but there's you know, more. We have the Prima Theater in the town, we have Seven Sisters in the town, we have Creative Works Lancaster in the town. There is now a Latino theater company called Paloma Players. Uh, there's an African American theater company called Theater for Transformation, and I'm just hitting the tip of the iceberg. And also, uh, through places like the Ware Center, which are largely presented houses, we can bring internet nationally acclaimed artists to Lancaster for people to enjoy at Lancaster prices. But we also have room on the stage for local actors or actors who are just beginning because new work is critical too. And Lancaster's a, a really nice place to start to develop work that can then move on to the national or international level. Lancaster City where everyone is welcome. Lancaster City where everyone has a home. You got ourselves, you got the chameleon, you got so much good stuff going on. We bring in um, an awful lot of European acts, an awful lot of Irish acts, um, a lot of national type acts. At Zetropolis, we show movies. They're art films about real people or real events, and it's just important to me to get that message out there in a room where you can sit with others. You can do it at home, but there's something really nice about sitting in a room with other people and then being able to talk about it afterwards. So. The filmmakers that are in this town have been awesome to us. Like, we love to host local films. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's seriously one of the most beautiful places in this country that my wife and I have seen, and we've traveled a lot. I'm already in the works of one last final short film, which I want to shoot here in Lancaster, but we've already in development of two feature films that we also want to shoot in Lancaster. There's, you know, a number of us who are still in this game and have been doing it for a while here, but boy, have we seen a lot of changes. Uh, 30 years ago, if you could just get a film done, even a short film, you'd really separated yourself from the crowd. Let me just say this right now, that's still the case. I tend to like films because they take me to different places. They give me different feelings, they give me different ideas, they give me different slices of life, and they try to process social problems in creative ways. So there were half a dozen people maybe in film here in Lancaster back then, 30 years ago, and now there are hundreds. And we have a tremendous, I think, support system here in Lancaster. It's affordable to live here. And what is the brain drain and the creative drain that's going out of New York City right now is, is the plus for Lancaster and other cities like us. You know, it warms my heart and I sometimes want to cry when I come in here and it's really busy and I'm just like, thank you so much for coming here. It's just amazing that you're cool enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. I love this town. I, I have had really nice opportunities, but every time one of these came along, I thought, I don't want to leave Lancaster. It's what I had to offer here just seemed better. I moved here for Lancaster. I actually moved here because of the arts in Lancaster. I, I was in Chicago for 24 years, and I came here in 2001 as a guest director um, to do Evita and uh, fell in love with the community, fell in love with the town, and then eventually moved here, actually before I became a full-time employee. I came here from London, actually. I was, uh, I played Curly in Oklahoma for the BBC Proms um, at the Royal Albert Hall. Opportunities came along for my wife to actually become employed here as well, and so we decided to make the, the leap and, and uh, become Lancastrians, which we're very proud to, to say that we are. We're all products of our surroundings. When you improve the surroundings, you improve the products, which is us. I mean, when you make your surroundings beautiful, you become a reflection of that beauty, and people see it in you subconsciously.
There's no doubt that the Langster Arts is part of what drives our tourism community right now. Uh, there, you can go to Washington, D.C., you can go to New York, and you can actually hear people talk about Langster in the context of its arts, not just about the Amish. And it's really made a significant difference uh, in the way people view Lancaster and what drives them here for tourism experiences. The Governor's Arts Awards was a good way to connect more established artists with younger artists. And a perfect example is the Untitled Lancaster Show, and that'll be back next year. So there are elements of the Governor's Arts Awards that'll come back in years to come. And that's the way Lancaster does things. We, we grab it, we run with it, and we celebrate it. And I think the arts has been a real driver in that effort. You walk the streets of Lancaster, you can tell there's a good vibe going on. There's a lot of good stuff happening. So yeah, come visit. Come move, we'll, we'll take you.